thanks for this morning. We thank you for your greatness, your power, your might. There is none like you. We come before you, God Almighty, acknowledging your goodness and your grace. Father, I submit my life into your hands. I pray for your cleansing. I pray for your purging. Touch me, Father. This moment I feel like a fresh touch I need. Father, I pray that your will be done in and through my life. Take over, God. This moment, God Almighty, I submit my life in your hands. I pray that you will have your way. We pray, God Almighty, that every plan of the enemy be subdued. And that, Father God, you will receive the glory. Let your will be done as we call upon your name. Speak to our hearts, we pray. Help us, Lord God, that even now we'll be able, God Almighty, to understand that which you have for us to learn. Speak to me through me. I pray that you'll forgive me of every sin, even now. And help me, Father God, that I stand on the sacred desk to speak your word with clarity and with power. Let your will be done. We pray that those that will hear their lives, God, will be changed. And God, you will receive the glory. Thank you for hearing us this moment, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's give God glory in the house. Hallelujah. We thank the Lord for all that he has done. He's indeed marvelous, he's mighty, he's awesome, he's excellent, and there is nobody like him. And we give him all the glory even now for having allowed us this privilege that we can come together, hallelujah, as we move about just to thank him and just to worship him because he is worthy to be praised, hallelujah. My father's children, I'm honored to have the privilege to come 
another day in this house and before the people of God to share the word of God and this our fasting day. And so I greet you all in the most excited and powerful name, the name of Jesus Christ, the name that is above every name. The writer said, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I greet those who are on social media that at this time has tuned in so that we can share together the word of God. As I said to us on Tuesday night, we will be sticking and staying in the book of Esther because there's so much to learn from this book. We thank God that it was opened up by our beloved sister Lou and so we are building on that which was already laid. I want to use for a theme this morning, somebody please tell Haman to change his mind. Somebody, please tell Haman to change his mind. Brothers and sisters, we will be looking in Esther chapter 3. We will move to Esther chapter 7, Esther chapter 8. We will be going to several places and we'll close at Esther chapter 9. So there are some verses of scripture that I will be highlighting to us this day that will form for us the message that God had laid on my heart to give us. Where we are in sacred scriptures, we found an issue that has arisen because someone refuses to stay in his lane. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to speak to those in the body of Christ and for those who believe in God irrespective of the challenges that they will face in this world present time and in this present season. This word from the book of Esther has been written thousands of years ago, but it is relevant and pertinent to now. And so I want to encourage those that are of the faith that have found themselves in situation that appears to be unchangeable that the God whom we serve he is able brothers and sisters we would have seen Israel in bondage and in captivity but as we take a closer look in the book of Esther whatsoever Israel issue with God was now settled. The issue was settled. We found Israel, ladies and gentlemen, being in the place of the Persian. They were taken into captivity by Nebuchadnezzar, then by the Assyrians. Now we found them with the Persians. The seed with the Persians is that they were freed to return to Jerusalem to build. But we identify that many of the Israelites remain within the Persians' territory. Now we find them living among the Persians. In this season of Esther, under the rule of Ahasuerus, somebody call him exorcist. Ladies and gentlemen, here we saw them living, and if they were a majority in number, they were living as a minority without power and official office, which means 
we have never heard at this time any Jew or Israelite holding an office. So even if they were great in number, as it relates to minority, they were without power and office. When you look at this, ladies and gentlemen, it would then have influenced nations to believe that they were without the defense of their God. Sir, please explain it. Because what people would look every now and then amongst the body of Christ and would have seen the people of God, what appears to be that they do not have power and authority, people will misunderstand them and will believe that because they are not postulating certain power, they are not postulating with certain earthly goods and possession, people will underestimate them and believe that they do not have any defense. So when you look at Israel in this season, nobody held an office. And those who would be in authority are from other nations. And as I said, maybe this will force people to believe that they are without support. But I come to tell somebody, who God has reinstated. I come to tell somebody who God has revived. I come to tell somebody who God has restored that he has not abandoned them. There are many people who have gone out of line with God, but they have renewed their relationship and their vows to God. But every now and then the circumstances of life have them to believe that God has abandoned them because of those who would have raised up their ugly heads to fight against them. I want you to know that God has not abandoned you. I wish that there's somebody hear me today. I said God has not abandoned you. And this is it. I want to propose a scripture this should allow you to be happy as we move into the book of Esther, starting from chapter 3. Hear what Psalm 94 and verse 14 to 23 says. For the Lord will not cast off his people, neither will he forsake his inheritance. But judgment shall return unto the righteous. And all the upright in heart shall follow it. Verse 16. Who will rise up for me against evildoers? Or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? Unless the Lord had been my help, my soul had almost dwelled in silence. When I said my foot slipped, my Thy mercy, O Lord, help me up. In the multitude of my thoughts within me, thy comfort delight my soul. Shall the throne of, the in, of iniquity have fellowship with me, which frame it mischief by a law? They gather themselves together against my soul, and the righteous of the righteous and condemned the innocent blood. But the Lord is my defense and my God is the rock of my refuge. And he shall bring unto them their iniquity and shall cut them off in their wickedness. Yea, the Lord our God shall cut them off. That is a word right there for somebody who God has restored, who God has revived. But as it is right about now, you feel as if you have been overrun by your enemies. I want you to know that God has not forsaken you. 
I wish that there's somebody here need today. You need to get happy right there because you need to know that God has not forsaken you. Brothers and sisters, the scripture have us to understand in Esther chapter 3 verse 1 that the king Ahasuerus has promoted a brother by the name of Haman, the son of Ham Madeta, who is the Agagite. The king had advanced him, watch this, and set him up. He set his seat above all the princes that were in 127 provinces. Oh, look at the position that Haman has risen to. His seat, ladies and gentlemen, was set up above all the other princes that are in the province. He was next to the king. Look at this. Haman was an official in the court of the Persian Empire under the rulership of King Hasarus. Brothers and sisters, I want to identify to you that Haman was this. He was not a Persian. Sacred history teaches us and the book of Esther has corroborated to identify Haman, watch this, as an Agagite. He is a Agagite, watch this, coming from the lineage of the Amalekites. But here we found him in sacred text, living in Persia, being elevated by King Exorcist. This level of elevation, ladies and gentlemen, has caused Haman to forget where he's coming from. Preacher, why do you say it? Haman, ladies and gentlemen, if he is an Agagite coming from the lineage of the Amalekites, history would have teaches us that his family lineage were beaten down by Israelites and so, if he is at this point in Persia, living among the Persian, coming from that lineage, and has been elevated to an office of a prime minister next to the king, he should be happy. He should be happy, but not only should he be happy, ladies and gentlemen, he not only should be happy, but what is he should be humbled. There are many people that refuse to be humble after God has lifted them from a low place and has elevated them. Many people forgot where they come from and has become high-minded to the point to which they would want to oppress those who seems to be in a less position than them. But hear what Luke chapter 14 and verse 11 says. For whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. And he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Did you hear what the Bible says? You got to read it one more time. For whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. And he that humbled himself shall be exalted. Somebody need to tell someone who you know right now that what is their position has changed. That they have been lifted, watch this, from a low place to a high place. In other words, they have been elevated to an, a new office. They were once upon a time, watch this, sharing space with other people, but now they have been given a cubicle by 
themselves. Now they have been given what it an office with a door. Let them not forget where they are coming from. They were once in an open space with everybody, but now they have been elevated. They need to remember that watch this, they must be humble. Hear what Psalm 75 verse 5 to 7 said. Lift not up your horn on high. Speak not with a stiff neck. For promotion cometh not from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. Watch this verse 7. But God is the judge. He put it down and he set it up another. Ah, oh, God Almighty. So even though you would have been elevated by somebody in a corporate space, you and I need to know that it is God who allows it to happen. What's this? I got to give you this. Jane 4 and verse 10 said, Humble yourself before the Lord because he is the one that promote it. So the Bible teaches us, here it is, that Haman was elevated. And the Bible now tells us with this level of elevation, would have observed how it is that Haman moves. Because we learn from sacred texts, after we read verse 1 of Haman's elevation, that when he entered the gates of the palace, the people would have bowed down to him. People now start bowing down to him and, and the Bible said, watch this, they also reverence him. When you read Esther 3 verse 2, you can understand that there is level of reverence how Haman has become high-minded. He has become high-minded, ladies and gentlemen, because the office that he has risen to comes with a clout. The office that he has risen to has placed him in a position where people below him would have seen him and respect him. And because of the office that he held, they reverence him. No, I, I got to mess you up. Because the Bible teaches us that people were bowing to him. And watch this. And Haman, watch this, was not a part of the royal family. When you check history, you will realize that certain respect were given to those of royalty. He, what's this, was never a part of the royal family. But hear this, he was connected to royalty by virtue, what's this, of his elevation. Haman needs to remember he was not a part of royalty. But because of his elevation, he has close ties to royalty. And this close ties to royalty now enables people to respect him to the place to which they were bowing to him. When he saw that people were bowing to him, but a brother by the name of Mordecai refused to bow, he decided, ladies and gentlemen, that he would have taken matters in his own hands. Ah, God Almighty, because what we now saw in sacred scripture is that when other people saw that Mordecai was not bowing to Haman, the Bible says what they now did is that they spoke to, him, to, to Mordecai. And after having spoken to Mordecai, and Mordecai refused to bow to Haman, Haman got wind of what was happening. So now he decided that he was going to turn his focus on Mordecai. Esther 3 verse 4 said, Now it came to pass when they spake daily unto him. This is Mordecai. And he hearkened not unto them that they told Haman to see whether Mordecai's matter would stand. 
for he had told them that he was a Jew. So now when it was told to him and that Mordecai was not bowing because he was a Jew, we now saw that Mordecai, uh, what is, that Haman decided that he was going to do something about this. Ladies and gentlemen, hear what happened in verse 5 of Esther 3. And when Haman saw that Mordecai bowed not, nor did him reverence, then Haman was full of wrath. Brother and sister, you saw what happened because being high-minded and now heard that one person was not bowing to him, he decided to take matters in his own hand. I want to read for us Deuteronomy chapter 17, rather Deuteronomy chapter 8 and what verse 17 says. But you shall remember the Lord your God. For it is he who is giving you power to make wealth. That he may confirm his covenant which he swore to your fathers as it is this day. I'm not just talking about him, man. I'm talking about somebody that's a part of the body of Christ who is operating in the spirit of Haman. You have got to be careful that when God has done and allowed some changes to be made to your life, to your status, that you do not become high-minded and believe that you can wield power that you never inherited. Ah, God Almighty. This was not inherent power that Haman got. It was derived power. He was only given power. Power never belonged to him. And he's operating as if he has inherent power. The Bible now said he now focused his attention on Mordecai. And with this, he was no angry. He was angry because somebody refuses to bow to him. And the text said, ladies and gentlemen, with this level of anger, Haman decided that he was going to pressure Mordecai. The Bible said in verse 6 of Esther 3, And he thought scorn to lay hands on Mordecai alone. For they had shewed him the people of Mordecai. Wherefore Haman sought to destroy all the Jews that throughout the whole kingdom of Ahasuerus, even the people of Mordecai. So here is it. Haman decided that not only will he pressure Mordecai, but he decided that everyone, watch this, that connected to, what's this, to Mordecai's family lineage, he was going to get rid of. Which means all the Jews that lived within the 127 province. He was not just, watch this, against Mordecai and his immediate family. But I heard him say, everybody within, watch this, his generation. In other words, whatever set he comes from, they must be destroyed. You can understand, ladies and gentlemen, how some people become high-minded and heady that they will want to make decisions and without even counting the cost of the decision that they are making. Because not only Mordecai alone, he was now angry with, but he was now angry with the Jews. Because Mordecai is a Jew. He was angry with people who never did him any harm. Ah, God Almighty. Can you understand how cruel people can be? That they will be upset not just with the person who, who might have done them harm, but the entire generation. In other words, they want to exercise their authority, not at the person only who hurt them, but everybody that's connected to them. But can I say one more time, will somebody tell Haman to change his mind? Because Haman needs to understand he's getting ready to step into serious territory. 
he needs to understand that Mordecai was not standing by himself. He needs to understand that where Mordecai came from and the God who Mordecai served is greater than the kingdom that he is aligned to. Can I say it one more time? Will somebody please tell him, man, change his mind? Because somebody out there is making a decision to do something, to do harm to somebody, but they don't even realize that they are getting ready to touch God. God's anointed. Hallelujah. And there's a scripture that declares it. In Samuel, that touch not the Lord's anointed and do his prophet no harm. So the Bible tells us, because Mordecai refuses to bow, Haman came up with a strategy. When you read Esther chapter 3, and verse 8, the Bible said, And Haman said unto the king, There is a certain people scattered abroad and dispersed among the people in all the province of thy kingdom. And their laws are diverse from all the people. Neither keep they the king's law. Therefore it is not for the king's prophet to suffer them. But if it please the king, let it be written that they may be destroyed. Watch that word. Watch that word. That they be destroyed. Because what it is that Haman is saying right here, we want to wipe that generation out totally. Not that those that hurt him be killed, but the entire Jews, watch this, be destroyed. That's what Haman said. And I will pay 10,000 talents of silver to the hand of those that have cha charge of this business to bring it into the king's treasury. Haman said, King, if you allow me, those people that I've identified to you, I will take care of it. I'll even pay those who will be carrying out the assault. And if it please the king, let it be written. And the king took the ring. Watch this. Verse 10. From his hand and gave it unto Haman, the son of Hamadetta, the Agagite, the Jews' enemy. And the king said unto Haman, The silver is given to thee, the people also, to do with them as it seemed thee. So the king said, What is my Haman? I don't want no money. Keep the money. Just you and the people who will be doing the job, you can keep that money. So the text teaches us that Haman no plot to destroy Mordecai and the Jew. Watch this. Now, what messes me up, ladies and gentlemen, because I'm teaching you the text and I'll be using this particular teaching session in this um, fasting service as one that we will use within the congregation for our training. Because hear what the Bible now teaches us in verse 15 of Esther chapter 3. Watch this. The Bible said, after this decree was written, note the text, and copies... Of this writing for commandment to be given in every province. Read in verse 14. And it was published unto all people that they should be ready against that day. So watch this. Haman had written that what is on the 12th month, 13th day, the assault would be carried out on the Jews. After this was written, and it was sent throughout all the province. Look at verse 15. Because I got to pull something from verse 15. The Bible said. The post went out. Being hastened by the king's commandment. And the decree was given. What's this? In Sushan's palace. Now in Sushan we found. That a lot of Jews live in this area. The Bible said. And the king and Haman sat down to drink. But the city of Sushan was perplexed. Preacher, why did you identify verse 15? 
I wanted to see what happened in sacred scripture. Because here it is. When it is, watch this, that Haman got the letter written, signed with the signet ring of the king, and it was sent, watch this, throughout all the provinces, even unto the palace Sushan, the era where a lot of the Jews were living. What's this? Clause B of verse 15, Esther 3.15 said, And the king and Haman sat down to drink. Somebody missed that. What now happened is that when it is, ladies and gentlemen, that this decree was no sent. The Bible said the king and Haman sat down to drink. Haman sat with the king, watch this, to celebrate the success of the new law that he had written. Oh my God. Haman start having a drink. Haman get so happy that he was now drinking with the king concerning the success of the letter. He was so sure that watch this, know that the, the, the law was written concerning the destruction, watch this, of the Jew, this law cannot be reversed. He now sat down and was drinking the success of that plot that he came up with. There are some people that have plotted to hurt and to harm others who have not done them any harm and at the extent to which they guarantee it's going to happen, they have already started to rejoice. In other words, there are some people that have plot wicked things against others and they are already celebrating the victory of the plot that they have put together even before it has has taken place but i want to tell that devil you are already celebrating a victory oh my god almighty but you don't even realize what's coming you need to understand devil that you are plotting against the people of god and if you plot against the people of god you need to know that you are in trouble my god almighty the bible said that hey man sat with the king and he was having a drink the plan that he has put forth he guaranteed that it would have come to pass because the law of the media and the persians are irreversible but can somebody help me today because i want to read for you proverbs 16 and verse 9 hear what the text said the text said the heart of a man's plan what's this in his way the heart of man planned his way but the lord established his steps so man can be planning something but man needs to know the only way that what he planned came to fruition is if the lord established it ah uh, somebody hear what i just said because somebody today need to hear me you are a believer you got wind of what was planned against you but you need to understand man will plan but it is god who established the steps proverbs chapter 15 verse 22 said without the counsel plan will fail without counsel plan will fail you see, when you read the text, you realize that Haman had conversation, watch this, with his family and friends. Ah, God Almighty. So he went forth and he devised a plan. But the text said, without counsel, plan will fail. If anybody has, is making a plan without proper counsel, and the only counsel comes from God, that plan is going to fail. But with many advisors, they will succeed. If you seek the right people as your advisor, your plan might be successful. Proverbs 19, 21 said, Many are the plans in the mind of a man, but it is the purpose of the Lord that it will stand. So it doesn't matter who has planned anything against you. If it is not the purpose of the Lord, tell somebody that plan will not stand. I wish I had a church up in here because I want to get somebody excited today for you to know that whoever is planning 
standing against you, they need to know that they're stepping into serious waters. My God Almighty, because the Bible said, here it is, that Haman thought that he had made headway in his plot so much so he was now having a drink with the king because whatever he had declared looked like it was coming to pass. But I need to tell somebody that it's not over yet, Haman. You need to understand that that's what you are planning. But I serve a God that whatever a plan that a man put in place, if God does not allow it, it will never come to pass. Somebody need to get happy right there. Because if you know that God is on your side, it doesn't matter who plan anything against you. If God doesn't allow it, it's not going to come to pass. Preacher, what are you saying? It doesn't matter where they go. If they go to mother, if they go to father, it's still not going to come to fruition. Even if they put something in your food and your drink, if God doesn't design for it to harm you, it's not going to come to pass. Even if they have unscrewed certain what is of the lugs of your vehicle, hoping that the wheel will fall off as you drive, can I preach that let you know it's not going to come to pass. Even if they set some kind of a trap for you to fall in so that your character will be marred, it's not going to come to pass. Even if they have set you up against your family so that they will disown you and write you off, can I tell you the plan is not going to come to pass. Even if they set up your boss or your supervisor against you so that you should be fired from your job, it's not going to come to pass. Even if they set system up so that the application you make will not go through so that you will get that job, can I tell you, it will not come to pass because God is the one that will see the plan through. Oh my God Almighty. So the Bible teaches us that the letters went through to the 127 province. Because there is a date set for the Jews to be killed. Oh my God. But can I say it one more time? Will somebody tell Haman, please change his mind? Bible teaches, ladies and gentlemen, that things escalated. Because Haman never changed his mind. In fact, what we found from sacred text is that Haman took counsel from his family to build a gallows to kill Mordecai on. Where we are in sacred text, Esther chapter 7, hear what the text said in Esther 7, verse 7. Now that Haman has built that gallows. He was invited to eat with the king and the queen Esther. Unbeknown to him, Esther, who was advised by Mordecai concerning the letter of the law that was written regarding the destruction of the Jews, she has connection to the king because the king is her husband. Not only the king, her husband, ladies and gentlemen, she was a Jew. And if there is a threat concerning the annihilation and destruction of the Jew, then it means that her family men what it would have been wiped out. And that is the lineage that she comes from. And the Bible now teaches us that what Esther did is that she invited her husband and Haman to dinner. We have preached about it, you know it. I'm just here just to identify certain things from the text as we go. Because we now learned that Esther invited her husband to dinner. Dinner one, they ate. She invited him to dinner number two. And at dinner number two, ladies and gentlemen, 
versus Haman life becomes unraveled. Because what Haman did and was hoping that it would come to fruition, watch this, and he would be around to see the end of it. God was now turning the table. My God Almighty. I said God was now turning the table because they are persons who have carried out threats and would have gone to the extent to hurt innocent people. Watch this. And is expected to stand on a lofty place and look down at innocent people's demise. I want them to know, my God Almighty, that they will not be around to see it happened. In other words, I heard God as he spoke to Moses. He said, the enemy that you see today, you will not see again tomorrow. Preacher, why are you getting it so hard? Because we are living in a time where there's a system that has been set up against the people of God. Many lives have been threatened and a date has been set for the execution of the warrant that the enemy has put in place. So right about now we realize that things are subtle. The enemy is working in a subtle way. There are some plans that the governmental system has had for the church. And these plans is to enact certain laws uh, against the church so that the word of God will not be able to be preached the way it's being preached now. Why? Because the church of the living God is against, uh, against many of the practices and principles that have been set up by what's this our governmental system. Have you forgot, ladies and gentlemen, and we don't have a voice to declare it, that whilst the teachers in our country did not get what's this, the salary increase that they requested, we we have people in governmental office got more than a hundred percent increase in their salary and they said there was no money available and they only gave the teachers four percent they are police officers and people in military who had requested a certain amount increase in their salary and they were told that the monies are not available yet we saw the people who said in parliament have increased their salary more than a hundred fold. Don't you realize the kind of system where it is ladies and gentlemen when they are challenging the laws of God and they are fighting even at this point against devotions being held in school when it is that the minister of education would have sent out an edict concerning what's this devotions declaring that who chose to go can go first of all we grew up in a system where devotion was non-negotiable everybody will go to devotion prior will be prayed, songs will be sung, and sacred scriptures will be read. But we are in a time and a season where they want to even remove prayer out of the school and the reading of sacred scriptures. My God Almighty, because the system prefer my God to live without respecting and reverence God. You missed the text. We are in scripture where it is that man want people to bow to them whilst they are not ready to bow to the Almighty God. But I want to tell him, man, you better change your mind because you are setting yourself up for trouble. There's a governmental system, my God Almighty, that is operating with the spirit of Haman to believe because they are in high office, they are untouchable, they are unbreakable, and they are unstoppable. But the God who 
whom I serve, he can turn tables around. My God Almighty, I wish there was somebody hear me today. Brothers and sisters, what is heaven called an election? And we need to vote out Satan. If it is that there will be no more Bible reading and devotion they're putting a cap on it in our school we need to march ladies and gentlemen and make a declaration to the prime minister of our country and to the minister of education for them to know we will not have it because this country all most if not all our national hero my god almighty they had respect and reverence for God. Hallelujah. And we need to understand that when God exalts a nation, if it is that a nation will not acknowledge God, a nation will never be exalted. Any nation that refuses to acknowledge God is a nation that will plummet. And I can't afford to live in a country that will plummet because the government refuses to acknowledge God for whom he is. Hallelujah. Come to let somebody know God is our refuge and strength. When we have a prime minister and a governor general who was said to have grown up in church and to have said to have aligned themselves, watch this, to a religious organization, a Christian organization, but would have had the audacity to be behaving as if prior reading scripture and devotion in school does not really matter and they are not defending the cause. We are in trouble. Don't you know that there are many people have backslidden when it is that God would have allowed them to get a job. They have backslidden when God have allowed them, watch this, watch this, to be elevated to certain offices. They have backslidden. They have forgotten who it is that causes them to be in that place. Even, ladies and gentlemen, within the courtroom, a hand would have been laid on a Bible and people would have made references concerning, watch this, truth and the justice in carrying out their duties they would have touched that bible and they would have repeated what was quoted to them by someone else but the moment they get in office and what and things begin to go on for them they have ignored the god who allowed them to be there but can i tell somebody what's this you better realize that if you do not acknowledge god for whom he is he will turn the table he will make you not only become a footstool, but the very thing that you want to be done to the people who are innocent will be done to you. Hear what the Bible says, because where we are, as we get ready to close in Esther chapter 7, the Bible now says, watch this, when it is that, watch this, Esther, who is the wife of King Ahasuerus, now revealed to him the predicament watch this that her family lineage was facing what predicament because when it is watch this when Haman watch this declared that the Jews should be exterminated he never knew that that threat was also concerning the wife of the king whom he served my God almighty you missed it I gotta say it one more time Haman had declared by virtue of the law that he put in place, signed with the king's ring, the extermination of the Jews and the king Ahasuerus, his wife is a Jew, which means that is an assault on her family lineage. The Bible says she began to make a petition to her husband. You need to understand he what is Ahasuerus was Esther's husband and also king. Gotta say it one more time. Ahasuerus was Esther's husband and Esther's king. So when it is that Haman thought that he was only gonna get rid of Mordecai and some Jew that he heard about, he never even realized that the queen under which he served is also a Jew.
You see, the enemy don't know everything concerning your life. The enemy only knows something and believes that what he knows is everything. Peter, what do you mean? The enemy don't even know your connection. If the enemy ever know your connection, the many things that he has tried to do, he would never have done it. If the enemy knows that you are connected to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, he will realize that he is in serious trouble. If he tries to hurt you, my God, I didn't bother up in this church that I can preach to this day because I've got a scripture that I want the enemy to hear. In Matthew chapter 18 and verse 6, hear what Jesus said, but whosoever shall cause one of these little ones to who believe in me to fall. He said it were better for him that a millstone were hang about his neck and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Preacher, what is this? I mean, the Lord is saying if anybody mess with one of them children that belongs to me, he said, what's this? He said, what's this? It would be better if a millstone be hang around that neck of that person who messed it up and be thrown into the sea and drown. Hold on there. Preacher, you, you need to give it to me better. In other words, God says, what's this? What's this? What's this? He's saying, the judgment that is going to come upon the one who hurt one of my little children. What's this? What would be better is if a millstone be hang around that person's neck and he be thrown into the sea because what's coming is worse than the judgment of a millstone. A millstone, ladies and gentlemen, would be a heavy stone that would be used and pushed to grind wheat. But to know if that heavy stone, God Almighty, that grind wheat puts around someone's neck with a cord and that they'll be thrown into the sea and they would have drawn is a lesser punishment than the punishment that God has if the enemy ever knew hallelujah the, the kind of judgment that is about to meet messing up with God's people he would just back off can I say it one more time will somebody please tell him man to change his mind my God almighty because the Bible now teaches us that because Haman never changed his mind ladies and gentlemen when Esther revealed to the king her identity as a Jew and being his wife and to know that the man who he elevated that served on him has planned to destroy what's this her lineage and her the bible said the king got furious does my enemy know that if god ever knew the plot that is planning against me the anger that will be kindled he would run and hide because the text says and the king arising from the banquet wine in his wrath this is after hearing that the very ring that he gave Haman to sign that letter was a plot concerning the family of his wife. The text said he got up from the banquet wine with wrath. I could imagine the king said I've been deceived. Because there are many people, you are deceiving people in high office for your own gain. You're deceiving people, you pretend as if you really appreciate them, but you're not really appreciate them. You're only excited about the office that you have received. And if you can use them, watch this, to your future elevation then you will the bible said the king arising from the banquet wine in his wrath went into the palace garden can i say one more time after the king heard of this plot he got up and he went into the palace garden and the bible said and Haman stood to make a request for his life to esther and the queen for he saw that there was evil determined against him by the king i come to tell him and you're too late you should have changed your mind before you went to the second dinner there are some people that have plotted some plot time is going to catch up on you before you can apologize and repent and you are about to meet your judgment is there anybody hearing me the bible said what is the king was so angry that he got up and he walked out of the palace 
and he went into the garden because at this point ladies and gentlemen he realized that he was deceived and the Bible said with this in mind the Bible said here it is hey man was no making an attempt to repent from that which he had earlier done asking was it for his life to be spared after he realized that the king is angry hey man if you think you alone can anger anger wait until the king's anger has been kindled my god almighty i'm not talking about king asherus i'm talking about king jesus if the enemy ever allowed the king's anger to be kindled he's going to be in trouble because the bible notes ladies and gentlemen that when the king returns into the palace the bible said he saw him and falling what's this upon the bed the very bed that esther was on and he thought to himself because the king says in esther 7 and verse 8 then said the king will he force the queen also before me in my house as the word went out of the, of the king's mouth the bible said that covers Haman's face watch it when the king stepped out into the palace garden and when he went out to clear his head when he turned and he looked he saw Haman reclining on the very couch that his wife was reclining on and the king now believe that that was when Haman was accusing or attacking his wife the text said well and when the king made that utterance before Haman could open his mouth what's the text in in verse 7 the Bible said the support of the king that was standing there covers Haman's mouth and Haman's face what you mean preacher then just bag him head God Almighty when the head has been bad it means he has no lost his authority my God Almighty and there are many men up in here hearing me your head is getting ready to be bad your mouth is going to be shut and your face is going to be covered because the next thing we learn from the tech ladies and gentlemen that somebody mentioned to the king he had built a gallows for Mordecai and verse 10 in the scripture teaches us because here it is in verse 9 rather the king no standard in the house of him and the king says hang him thereon somebody said to the king he have already made a gallows uh, what's this to hang Mordecai and the king no shouted hang him on it and verse 10 says and they hang him on, on the very gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai then was the king wrath pacified oh god almighty i got to close i'm so excited because i'm teaching preaching this because i want somebody to get the text here because ladies and gentlemen when it is that the turbo turns that the man who think that he was was it unstoppable and what's this he was going to stand up and see the demise of innocent people the bible teaches us that he now got in trouble his mouth was covered and his face was hidden not only that ladies and gentlemen but he was reeled out of the presence of the king and he was hung on the very gallows that he had built what's this for someone else to be killed and don't you know that when you mess with the wrong person or the wrong people you are only setting yourself up for God's judgment because the Bible said ladies and gentlemen he suffered the very fate he was planning for somebody else I come to tell somebody who believe in God don't worry about your enemies I don't care where they come from if they're in what's his king's house veil royal or they might be in buckingham palace you don't have to worry about them i don't care where they sit it could be a commissioner or it could be a lieutenant it rather what is and it also could be an inspector of police or a superintendent you don't have to worry about them it could be a coo or a ceo you don't have to worry about them they could be a GM general manager do not have to worry about them because when God is on your side he will turn the tables around I just come to tell somebody keep on serving the God whom you serve hallelujah because even no one it looks like he's not gonna come through but don't worry give it a little time because the Bible said he was taken out and he would hang on the very gallows but ladies and gentlemen that's not all 
God. When we skip to us, it's Esther chapter 9 and verse 13 down to 14. We also saw something else because the Bible said the petition of the queen never ended there. But then she said to her king, her husband, one more time. She said, if it did please you, I have one more request to make. And in verse 13, the Bible said, then Esther, watch this, said, if it pleases the king, let it be granted to the Jews which are in Sushan to do tomorrow also, according unto here this day's decree. And let, watch it, Haman's ten sons be hung upon the gallows. My God Almighty, you see, Haman, what you did to your family? And the Bible said, and the king commanded it so to be done. And the decree was given at Sushan. And they hang Haman's ten sons. Jesus of mercy. What's it, hey man? You need to know you're not only messing up yourself, but you're messing up your posterity. Because when you go up against God's people, not only you are going to be in judgment, but your wife is going to be in trouble. Your children are going to be in trouble. And can I just extend it? Maybe other people in your generation is going to be in trouble. Because the threat that you have against Mordecai and the Jew, that has now come upon you and your family. My God Almighty because the God whom we serve he knows how to vindicate. My God is there anybody hearing me this day? I wanted to tell somebody don't mess with the people of God. Somebody right now as I get ready to close you need to get excited because you know what the enemies tried. You know how much the enemies tried to get you off your game. You know how much the enemies has tried to make you lose your mind and to make you lose your equipment but I come to let you know that whatever the enemy does it will not come to fruition because God in the name of Jesus Christ is the one that allows the plan to be established and if it is a plan that is concerning your life negative to that which God has designed it's not going to come to pass hallelujah I said it's not going to come to pass and it doesn't matter who write it it's not going to come to pass. It doesn't matter who declare it or decree it, it's not going to come to pass. But you need to know this day that whatever God declares concerning your life, that which is going to happen. Somebody need to get excited right there and begin to give God glory, knowing that the plans of your enemy are going to fail. I said the plans of your enemies are going to fail. I got to say it one more time. The plans of your enemy is are going to fail. I know that you have heard about it and I'm sure that you have seen some things put in place. But I come to let you know that God has another plan. And the plan of God is greater than the plan of men. Ladies and gentlemen, as I get ready to go, I want you to know that this King Hezasherus, he's, what's his, he's likened unto our King Jesus. That when he realized what it is that men were getting ready to do, I would have wiped to off. What he did is to stand in your defense. And you need to know you got a king who loves you. You've got a king who cares for you. What's it? Can I mess it up like this? Because what's his Esther? What's his Esther was King Herxes' bride. And I want you as a body of Christ to know that you are the bride of Christ. Oh my God Almighty. Somebody miss it. I said was it Ahasuerus? He was his, his wife, Esther, was his bride. So Esther was the bride to the king Ahasuerus. And you and I need to know that we are the bride of Christ. And what the king will do for his bride. In other words, what King Xerxes did for his bride. If an earthly man can do that for someone that he loved, what will our heavenly father do for us that he cares for? I want to know, ladies and gentlemen, that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I got to go because I'm through. But I just want you to know that if you know anything about Haman, you better stay out of the principles of Haman. Because Haman, what's it? Anybody who operates with the spirit of Haman will have a great fall. It doesn't matter who he's connected to. If he operates with the spirit of Haman, he's only setting himself up in 
trouble. But I want to let somebody know today, if you are for God, God will see you through. I said, if you are for God, God will see you through. I pray that this day, joy will come to your heart. I pray that this day, you will find peace. People of God, I pray that this day, you will be reminded and your spirit will be reaffirmed that God will never allow you to be destroyed. It would appear as if God is slow in his response. But I want you to know his timing is just right. His timing is just right. So don't worry concerning what's happening. God's timing is just right. May heaven bless you. And may God keep you. But I want you to know that you are not without help. And if anybody hearing me today, you operate with the spirit of Haman, which means you are filled with pride and arrogance. It's all about yourself and others are less than you. After having forgotten where you came from. You are only setting yourself up to be destroyed. But I pray that if that's you, you will take the warning today and humble yourself. But I'm also praying that the people of God who are feeling the hurt of the plans of Haman. Be encouraged because God is going to turn the table. May heaven bless you. May God keep you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your love. Who is likened unto thee? You're great, you're awesome, and you are mighty. There is none like you. Father, I came here today hanging on to your skirt, hanging on to hope. I came here today hanging on, God Almighty, to your word. Knowing that, God Almighty, you are the one that establishes a man. And I've come to know that when my heart is overwhelmed, you are the rock that I should hide in. I thank you, God Almighty, because this was not an easy word to be declared on today. But I thank you, Jesus, because you have declared two things in this word. One, a warning for those who operate with the spirit of pride and arrogance and will want to do things to hurt others. Warning, don't do it. Hey, man, in the scripture we found somehow that he was somehow religious and amongst the religious community we have found many men and women who have cruel intention and the second thing from this text or this teaching is to those who are your people that they should not give up hope. 
Because irrespective of what Haman will put in law, you have the last word. And so we thank you, God, for this day. I pray that joy will fill the heart of your people. Gladness, glee. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that they'll be excited to know that in due season you have showed up on their behalf. Thank you for hearing us. I pray that every word that was declared around this sacred desk will take root. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that had it been decreed and declared it will be signed with your signet ring, God. And it will be irreversible. It will be irreversible that those who plot against your people, their demise will be sharp and serious. And that your people will be delivered mightily. Thank you for hearing us. Let your will be done, we pray. We will hang on to your preach, teach, and read word. Knowing that God Almighty, we find comfort in knowing that you love us and you care. Have thine own way, we pray. We pray God Almighty will take full control of the rest of this day. That whatever activities we do have for the rest of the day, you will guide us accordingly. And grant unto us the victory. As we honor you. And we tell you thanks. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on somebody give God glory. Are you blessed today? If you are blessed. I need you to give God glory. If you were blessed. I want you to get excited. And praise the Lord. I said if you were blessed. I want you to lift your hands. And just give God glory. Hallelujah. What a God whom we serve. He's able to do great and mighty things. Don't worry about those who come up against you. Because they are coming up against the God that is in you. And so we thank God for today. And for everything that he has allowed us to share. And we are excited to know that the God whom we serve. He loves us enough. And that you have done great and mighty things. I pray that the peace of God will remain with you. And as you go through this day. I pray that you will know without a shadow of a doubt, that God is your refuge and your strength, a very present help in times of trouble. Grace and peace be multiplied. Come on, sing a song and just get excited with God. Hallelujah. Come on, give him glory. He's worthy to be praised. Don't be... Oh, why are we smiling so hard? Because it's another time for us to gather. Somebody type in the comments, I know his name is wonderful. Everybody right here. Hey, Miranda, this is my testimony. All of my life, I've never known you to fail. You remain the same man. Wonderful is your name. All of my life, I've never known you to fail. You remain the same man, wonderful is your name.